Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD Broadcast Studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Cody Johnson with news from around the Columbia Basin for Friday, December 7th. Tonight, we report on the arrest of a Moses Lake man suspected of killing a Soap Lake man. And we look at an art competition in Soap Lake this weekend. We re re revisit some of our viewers' favorite stories tonight, including one about every kid's dream Christmas gift, a giant robot. In sports, we check out the Moses Lake Chiefs, the Afraid of Tigers, and the Seattle Seahawks. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. Our top story tonight, Adrian Rodriguez is going to be arrested on a warrant for the murder of 29-year-old Soap Lake man, Tracy Fulbright. An arrest warrant was secured this morning with bail set at $1 million. Rodriguez, a 28-year-old Moses Lake man, is currently in the Franklin County Jail on unrelated charges and will be re released into the Sheriff's Office custody on December 9th for charges of murder and kidnapping. Fulbright's body was found bound, gagged, and shot several times. A passing motorist reported finding the body on October 17th near Road 10 Northeast and Road L Northeast, about eight miles north of Moses Lake. Fulbright was at the home of Rodriguez on Robin Lane in Moses Lake on October 17th when Rodriguez allegedly accused Fulbright of inappropriately touching his daughter. Rodriguez reportedly punched Fulbright, then tied him up and put him in the trunk of a car. The victim was driven to Road L Northeast and shot several times. On a lighter note, the Art Guild of Soap Lake area invites everyone to the 9th Annual Winter Fest Art Show and Sale this weekend and next weekend. Original art is on display from noon to 6 p.m. at Soap Lake City Hall, which is located at 239 2nd Avenue Southeast. The art is divided into student and non-student categories and six divisions including painting, sculpture, drawing, ceramics, photography, mixed media, and multimedia. An artist reception and awards presentation takes place on Saturday at 5 p.m. Cash prizes are being offered along with a door prize for one show visitor. Some of the artwork is for sale with 20% of the proceeds going to support the Art Guild. A reminder of a tragic apartment fire in Quincy is being addressed. Here with the story is Robert Ryder. The remains of apartments damaged in a fire at Beverly Lanes in Quincy on November 10th are going to be torn down soon. Fire destroyed two apartments and water damaged six more when firefighters fought the blaze. The fire displaced six families and two are still looking, according to the Columbia Basin Herald. This is Robert Ryder with iFiber One News reporting. And thanks, Robert. This week, our state saw some big changes. In November, voters decided to legalize recreational marijuana and gave gay couples the opportunity to get married. Marijuana is officially legal in Washington state starting on Thursday. The new law taking effect allows adults to have up to an ounce of pot for recreational use. Authorities say users should smoke privately. So the idea of someone smoking in public, they shouldn't be doing it. And if we deal with them, they could get a ticket. That means no marijuana smoking at concerts, on public streets, or in public parks. However, busting pot users won't be a high priority. The joke might be that if you've got a guy drinking a beer on one corner and a guy smoking a joint on the other, we're going to go after the beer drinker first. Marijuana is still our lowest priority by city ordinance. Another place where pot won't be legal? 
most college and university campuses. What would happen is that it would put at risk a lot of federal funding that we receive. We receive a lot of research funding. Our students receive federal Pell Grants. There's another big change in Washington on Thursday. Same-sex marriage also becomes legal. Sandy Kozell, The Associated Press. While well, a lot of gay couples in Seattle signed up for wedding licenses, one couple took the plunge and became the first gay couple to marry here in Grant County. Here with the story is Ryan Lancaster. 279 marriage licenses were issued to same-sex couples in King County by 6 a.m. this morning, just hours after Governor Chris Gregoire signed a voter-approved law legalizing gay marriage. But in much more conservative eastern Washington, Rachel and Tamara Valdez stood alone at the Grant County Courthouse, filling out the paperwork on a long-term dream. First, middle, initial, and last name right there for me. We've known each other for 13 years, and we've been together for three years. Rachel Valdez grew up in Moses Lake and moved away to go to college in Seattle. She recently moved back with Tamara. It was important for us to get our marriage license here in Grant County because this is where I was born and raised. And I think it's important for our community to see people actually get their marriage license so then they can make a personal connection to, oh, we know Rachel and Tamara. Valdez has been active as a volunteer with the Pride Foundation, a Northwest organization focused on rights and equality issues for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered people. She believes Eastern Washington is trending towards a more inclusive and accepting attitude towards the LGBT community. There are a lot of people in this community that didn't even know that they knew an LGBTQ person. And so I think that was a key point in the campaign in terms of telling our personal stories and making personal connections within the community that we live. The women weren't entirely on their own at the courthouse. Afraid of Mayor Chris Jacobson was there in a private capacity. He and his wife Dorothy are friends of the couple. I've known Rachel and Tamara for probably a year and a half, two years, ever since we've been working on Referendum 74. Placed on the ballot by foes of same-sex marriage, Referendum 74 asked voters to affirm or repeal the marriage equality bill that passed the legislature early this year. The statewide vote was nearly 54 percent to retain the law, although nearly 69 percent of Grant County voters rejected the measure. Even so, Jacobson says he was surprised to meet hundreds of supporters as he and his wife campaigned for R-74. Well, there are allies in the community. They're a little bit quiet because it is a conservative community. But uh, no, there are people here that are very supportive of the LGBT community. Thanks for being so patient. Sure. Imagine if you're in King County, what this would be like. These folks now are going to be able to be families and uh, have all the rights and benefits that this state uh, has to offer all families. So it's an exciting time. It's a beginning, but uh, it's a great moment. Tamara says the new law is important for many reasons, but personally... It's important because we're in love and we want to be able to share that commitment and deep love with our family and friends. The couple is planning a formal wedding ceremony December 16th. For i Fiber one News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. And thanks, Ryan. A Matamawa man was arrested after leading police on a chase at speeds up to 110 miles per hour yesterday afternoon. The Washington State Patrol tried to stop a maroon-colored SUV near Yakima, which led to a chase that ended in desert air on Thursday. The State Patrol was chasing him on State Route 243. The suspect left the car and ran, taking clothes off as he went to change his appearance. State Trooper Darren Miller said the suspect also tried to break into several homes to hide, but the State Patrol had an aircraft overhead to keep an eye on him. The suspect was still running from the State Patrol when he reportedly ran into a Grant County Sheriff's deputy and was arrested. The suspect had a felony warrant, misdem misdemeanor warrants, and was also arrested for trying to elude police. The suspect's name was not available, nor were the charges on his arrest warrants. If you have gone through the work to set up your Christmas tree, be thankful it wasn't as hard as putting up the tree in Soap Lake. Here with the story is Ryan Lancaster. How do you get a Christmas tree from here to here? The city of Soap Lake enlisted the help of Grant PUD last Friday in falling and moving an 80-year-old spruce about 11 city blocks. It was replanted for the season at the intersection of Canna Street and Main. It wasn't an easy process. Power lines needed to be lifted as the tree was carefully cut out of the front yard of a residence and gingerly placed on a trailer for transport. 
Soap Lake Mayor Raymond Gravel said the tree was donated to serve as the town's tannin bomb by the property owner. This year's tree came from the Hoffman residence up on West Main in Ginkgo. I understand that it was planted in 1929. People that have been around for a long time say that this is one of the biggest and most beautiful trees that we've ever had. The base of the tree needed to be cut down to size before it could be lifted off the trailer and set on a massive tree stand, which is placed into the ground for stability. This tradition for Soap Lake goes all the way back to the mid-70s. I just asked Marina Romery, owner of the Notaris Lodge, and she said mid-70s and there hasn't been a year missed since. This is a wonderful tradition for Soap Lake and everybody looks forward to it. The tree was bolstered for support and lights were strung that same day. Students from Soap Lake Elementary School will be putting ornaments on the tree this week and there it will stand for the remainder of the holiday season. While not quite as large, Afreda brought its own fresh cut Christmas tree to the Sun Basin Plaza last Friday, also with some help from Grant PUD. Afreda's tree too had to be trimmed before being lifted into place. After it was positioned with the star side up, of course. For iFiber One News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. Thanks, Ryan. The State Department of Correction is looking for more people with arrest warrants. Each of the people you see here have warrants for their arrest and are wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We'll be right back after these messages with the latest from our iFiber One Weather Center.